Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's case is one that is extra heartbreaking to me. I mean, it's always sad when someone goes missing, but when it's a young child or any child, it's, it's just extra heart-wrenching. And sadly, this case never received any national attention. I had never even heard of it, honestly. Um, I found this case on thecharlieproject.com, which if you don't know what that is, it's an amazing website that lists all the children in the U.S. that have been missing for at least a year. It has their names and info on their disappearance. So I'm going to go ahead and get on with the story. This video is on the disappearance of Leanna Susan Marie Warner. June 14th, 2003 was a beautiful, warm, and sunny day in Kizzen, Minnesota. However, the day would soon turn into a dark one that one family in a community would never forget. A little girl would go missing, leaving very few clues as to her disappearance. Five-year-old Leanna Warner and her mother had spent the day going to yard sales and garage sales in their community. And when they had gotten home, Leanna decided she wanted to go play at a friend's house. It was just a few streets away. And her mom protested, said, no, you need to rest. But she finally gave in and told her she could go, but she had to be home by 5 p.m. So around 4.30 p.m., Leanna made her way to her friend's house. It was a short walk that she had done on her own multiple times, you know, so her mom wasn't worried. Um, but when she got to the friend's house, it was apparent that no one was home. So she decided to turn around and go back to her house. Now, we know she did make it to the friend's house because several of the neighbors saw her knocking on the door and they saw her you know, turn around and head home. But sadly, she never made it there. By 5 p.m., when Leanna had not returned home, her mom, you know, understandably started to panic. Her mom waited around a little bit, you know, thinking maybe she was just running late, but at 5.30, she started searching for her. She was knocking on doors and enlisting the help of other people in the neighborhood. Leanna's father had been out on an ambulance call, you know, returned, and he started helping along with parents and children from the surrounding suburbs. Everyone gathered together and was searching everywhere for her. By 9 p.m., despite so many people searching, there was still no sign of Leanna. The only thing that was found were her shoes that she'd been wearing, and they were found on the steps of her friend's porch that she had gone to visit. So at this time, the police were called. The Kizen Police Department arrived on the scene shortly after they received the phone call from Leanna's parents. And another search party was sent out, including the aid of police, firefighters, and volunteers. They checked garages, barns, sheds. They walked every trail, and they even used cameras to look into abandoned mines and helicopters with heat-sensing technology. They were really hoping that Leanna had just wandered off somewhere and gotten lost. The group searched for 48 hours, but were unable to find any clues as to what had happened to her. At the time of her disappearance, Leanna stood between 3 feet and 3 feet 2 inches tall. She weighed approximately 48 pounds. She had brown hair cut into a short bob and brown eyes. She had a mole or a wart above her left ankle and a dimple on her left shoulder. The last thing she was seen wearing was a sleeveless blue denim dress with a belt, orange underwear, and a flower earring with a red garnet in her right ear. She also goes by the nickname Beaner. She was described as being a very outgoing and friendly little girl and she was brave and wasn't really scared of anything and she had survival instincts that were considered very advanced for her age. She loved playing with her dolls and riding her bike and just spending time with her family. Now a month after Leanna vanished, a local townsperson came across a child's footprints like in the mud by the Longyear Lake which I'm think was close to their house. So the Kizem Police Department had the lake drained in an attempt to see if maybe her body was in there, but they found no evidence that she was. They searched and searched, but they had to stop when winter came because the lake froze over. In the summer of 2004, the authorities began a new search of Kizem um, in another effort to try to find her remains because at this point, I think they really thought she had just wandered off, but nothing was found and since then there have been no further searches of that area. And the most troubling thing for investigators was there was absolutely nothing to go on. The only clue they'd found were her shoes. And that's something I found extremely odd and apparently it was looked into but nothing came of it was that, you know, her shoes were on the porch of the friend's house. Now I can see a child taking their shoes off before going into a friend's house, but she never actually went into the house. She knocked and they weren't home. Maybe for some reason she was leaving in a hurry and forgot to put them back on, but I don't know. Um, that part's just really unsettling for me. Although there is no concrete evidence that Leanna was kidnapped, 
um, police think that is the more likely scenario. Um, you know, if she had just wandered off, they probably would have found her by now or even found her body, but nothing, nothing has been found. Over the years, the police have received more than 1,700 leads. One of the main suspects that was believed to potentially have a role in her disappearance was a man by the name of Matthew James Curtis, who was 24 at the time. In August 2003, Matthew was arrested for possession of child pornography. Due to his prior charges and how close he lived to Leanna, authorities suspected that maybe he had something to do with it. They were able to get a warrant to search his pickup truck for DNA. However, an extensive search of his truck and his belongings revealed that there was no evidence that Leanna had ever been in there. Therefore, there was no way to directly connect Matthew Curtis to the case. In September 2003, the day before he was supposed to appear in court for the child pornography charges, Matthew's body was found in his pickup truck a few miles out of Kism. He had taken his own life. So if he had anything to do with it, no one will ever know. Another person suspected of having involvement was Joseph Edward Duncan III. He was a convicted sex offender who was accused of kidnapping two children in Idaho. When authorities were going through his computer, um, you know, searching it for an unrelated case, they came across a document which made reference to Leanna's disappearance. Duncan also kept a diary and in 2004 he had written in it that he was afraid that he was going to be um, blamed for Leanna Warner's disappearance. And he was very discontented that he was being labeled as a sex offender. He was investigated but it was revealed that he wasn't even in the Kism area at the time that Leanna disappeared. Leanna's parents told authorities that in the weeks leading up to her going missing, that she'd been acting strangely. They came home one afternoon and found Leanna playing with like a case of Barbie dolls with a bunch of Barbie clothes, which they had not bought for her. So when her mother asked her where she had gotten them, she said that a little old lady gave them to her. A week prior to her disappearance, Leanna had packed a suitcase full of clothes and told her parents that she was going to go live with her new family. They also found her sleeping in her closet one night because she said that there were monsters outside that were going to get her. Investigators did look into this and they determined that there was no evidence to indicate that anyone had you know, been trying to groom her or lure her away from her family. So the information was dismissed. Numerous witnesses had recalled seeing a man in his mid-30s walking around their neighborhood. He was 5 feet 10 inches tall and around 155 pounds. He had a dark tattoo of a star or a sun on his right arm, but this man was never identified. Around the same time, witnesses identified a maroon and blue Cadillac that was driven by an African-American male who appeared to be in his 20s or 30s and had a bald or shaven head. There were also accounts of an unfamiliar older model um, rusty brown pickup truck that was driven by a Caucasian man with black curly hair. None of these men have ever been identified and it remains unclear if any of them had anything to do with Leanna's disappearance. Kism isn't a huge city. I believe it's a population or was back then of only around 5,000 people. But the evening she disappeared there were thousands of visitors downtown for a concert and a motorcycle run so that is another possibility that an out-of-towner could have you know snatched her up and took her off without anyone noticing. Leanna's parents Kaylin and Christopher Warner have never been considered suspects. This case is really frustrating because there's no clues, no evidence, and almost nothing to go on. The shoes on the porch, that's it. For years the Warners stayed at their home in Kism and they always left the porch light on for Leanna, hoping she would come home someday, but it didn't happen. They did eventually move away, which I imagine was a very difficult thing to do, but they have not given up hope, and they still hope that someday they'll get to see her again, or, you know, at least find out what happened to her. And they do still leave their porch light on for her, even at their new house. If you have any information on her disappearance, please contact the Kism Police Department at 218-749-60. One zero. Please keep Leanna's story out there by sharing her flyer, sharing this video, and telling her story. If I got any information on this case wrong, please feel free to correct me as well. You know, we like to believe that we live in this world where our children can be safe and bad things won't happen, but it's just not true. Please, and I'm not saying this to put blame on Leanna's parents. I would never do that because I truly don't believe it's their fault. You know, Leanna had walked 
to her friend's house multiple times on her own and was perfectly fine. But please teach your children, you know, about stranger danger. Let them know, you know, tell them what to do in scenarios where someone might be trying to grab them or try to hurt them. There are evil people out there that, you know, look for children that are by themselves and look for chances to just snatch them up. Now, I'm not saying that is what happened to Leanna because obviously none of us know, but it could be a possibility. Thank you so much for watching my video. I'd love to hear your theories on this case in the comments below. Click that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye.